and being with us. We also want to ask if everybody is safe, healthy, happy with what's happening these days, at least healthy being at home. And we look forward to connecting with you more often on such kind of platforms. Uh, today, we are going to talk about building your personal portfolio. And I have two guests with me whom I'm really, really proud of. Uh, I know them personally because of the kind of work that they do. And recently, of course, to, to plan the sessions. Uh, let me begin by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Nen Xiao. I head the design department at ILM University. And uh, we have always been very concerned about uh, the, the, when students study design, of course, before they come in, they bring in a little portfolio and while they're studying with us, and of course, in future, when they leave the studies, they have to go out to the industry with the portfolio. This has always been a question. What, is, what should a portfolio be? Uh, this is what we're going to talk about today. But let me begin by introducing uh, Bhaskar Agarwal. Bhaskar, you should raise uh -huh. your hand so they know who you are. Okay, there you are. Uh, Bhaskar Agarwal holds a master's in interaction <coughs> from National Institute of Design, Ahmedabad. But prior to his design education, he graduated in business management. I mean, really a lot of different domains, which is fantastic uh, if I look at the background. He of course has many years of experience as a design practitioner and has worked both with SMEs and internet giants and of course Fortune 100 companies, including Samsung, Honeywell, Infosys. I think name it. You probably have everything, Bhaskar. That's wonderful. <laughs> that I also have with me today Akshay, Akshay Khandelwa. There you are. Uh, he's a senior industrial designer at Honeywell and has uh, completed his master's in product design, focusing on industrial and business design from Thomas Academy, Milan. I think that's a dream of many students to be there. Uh, professionally, he's uh, experienced, um, experienced in B2B and B2C mass manufacturing industry uh, with industrial and consumer durable products. So this is, we really have to solve stalwarts. And I, more than that, I think I, I brought them onto the stage because I find them very, very exciting with the way they have planned their portfolio. And when I say portfolio, it means the journey of their careers. Uh, just to give you a small context to the webinar, it's called Building a post Personal Portfolio. And this is to discuss, you know, what's the relevance of collating your visual and creative strengths in a portfolio. So a portfolio should be representing who you are, what your strengths are, what are you really good at. But more than that, it should really be conveying to people who look at your portfolio to see where is your interest, where you are heading and what your journey has been. So um, I'm gonna ask the panelists to share their views and their personal experiences about what has it been with them? Um, what kind of strengths did they put together? Perhaps they have an anecdote to talk about, but I can assure you they are going to be very interesting. So we are going to begin soon, but before that, uh, any one of you, those who have questions, may please uh, type your questions in the chat and we will take up these questions at the end of the session. So I'll begin with you, Bhaskar. Uh, sure. want to know what your professional journey has been, what has been the highs and the lows and the achievements and challenges. More than that, of course, your challenges. Did this build, did this get uh, integrated into your portfolio and or was it just an, was your career an organic growth? Yeah, sure. Good morning, Professor, and thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. And yeah, so basically I'm from Kolkata. I'm born and brought up here and I went to, as you said, I went to a business school here and I think over there I got to see a lot of different subjects per area, like try them out and, and this whole aspect of systems thinking started to develop in me and but then there were some aspects of my creative pursuits which were coming very naturally to me and those cravings were left like not answered so that took me to uh, design school and in design school I was, uh, I think I started to look more inwards uh in like it was also realizing uh like other other aspects of human like you know 
like aesthetics and surface aesthetics for example so uh, yeah and then that opened up uh, like sort of a content for me uh, to really explore out like and i was very initially merely scratching the surface then so mm-hmm. i always felt like that, uh, whenever it came to the context of portfolio i always felt that okay if i say what originally i really like and believe in through uh, some kind of communication uh, that is my portfolio like you know so at that and it it has evolved and changed over a period of time and post that i've been working like for last 10 years into various corporate companies and but still like whenever you mention the word portfolio i will have some sense of delight and some sense of uncomfort also like you know oh, portfolio oh, yeah so yeah okay uh thank you for that um akshay i'm just going to uh, put your unique situation um in 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 place right now so you made some unique choices during your education that led you to take risks that's what i understand at times uh, but they were successful every every risk may not be successful too so i want to know was this a planned uh, way of working and in a sense was this like a planned portfolio uh good morning everyone i mean uh, thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, thank you so much uh, professor for allowing us and giving us space to actually share our view with the students and other people who are looking forward to be in design and design schools i i was just a person who really enjoy used to enjoy drawing and uh, you know to be part of art competitions to be out of college, uh, school and, and be part of uh, these uh, cultural activities which which made me the person i am today i believe and then i started with the paintings and things and all to just be part of the different workshops i can be uh, there i realized that there's something called design which can be a career too and uh, that pushed me to to make this a portfolio or let's say a stream of mind where i wanted to work in because i just wanted to be into a part, into something that i really enjoy doing rather than working so to me it's like every every day going somewhere where i'm actually going for fun so it's not to me a work anymore uh just after my 10th word i decided to just join an art school but uh, and my dad was also like courageous enough to he's like okay let's just go and then they're going to tell you that you have to actually finish 12 to get into one and uh, that made me do things till 12th and then i um, i joined a design school i gave an idea in other schools and i ended up getting into ilm uh, and i'm i'm in an ilm lmni to start with as an ug undergrad uh, from there uh, we had our journeys our foundations were laid really strong and all the teachers were from uh, nid only and then we went ahead and um, did uh, all the classes and the four uh, years module and after that i got into whirlpool i think that was a game changer i had never expected myself to land uh, you know end up there it, it was a uh, very unique opportunity i got out through my jury members and uh, um they were looking for someone to work with bamboo and uh, i just was doing a little bit work with bamboo at, i mean as an explore ex- very 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 starting level and they thought that it's going to be a good idea if you're in gurgaon you can join us and start doing the same and uh, there where i learned a lot in terms of but once you get into industry the aspects change and uh, whirlpool was that from whirlpool i was there with them for two and a half years where we did a lot of consumer appliances i was part with the refrigerator team and the global laundry team got an opportunity to travel around india abroad and learn more from the counterparts because uh, that that what you get at that early age and uh, all my colleagues and seniors were really supportive at, the, at that time uh, from there i decided that you know it's just been Two and a half years, I've been part of Whirlpool, and I'm starting to get comfortable. And that's not me. I, I just don't like it being settled at one place. So, decided to take up an opportunity for a scholarship project for Domus uh, with Alessi, and I got a 50% scholarship there. And that uh, moved me that you know what, whatever money it is, it, it's an opportunity I want to take for a year and go and do it. And then when Domus happened in 2017, uh, did a lot of uh, workshops and competitions and marathons there also, and was lucky enough to win them. I so always had that extra money to travel more and end up doing 13 countries and my uh, course and everything from it in a year which 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 was fantastic and then i came back and i joined hanivel so yeah currently in hanivel right now and okay. that's how i'm going about it yeah. well thank you akshay so we are going to have more questions on that but let me come back to baskar and i keep on thinking about you've done this management course and you know i see a huge amount many students 
really ultimately wanting to be able to take over, be the leaders in industry, and hence they follow the management path. But more than that, I see that after management, you went into design, which must have been quite a turnaround. And with two mainstream, uh, you know, learning in your pocket, uh, the expertise in your pocket, how does your portfolio look? Do you ever uh, integrate these two? So ultimately, my question would be, what? how is your portfolio unique? Because it is unique in my mind at this moment. Yeah, so uh, I always find it very challenging to communicate systems thinking through uh, one sort of a structure in my portfolio. So I tend to go multi-channel, like I, I'll go and do a podcast about something or I'll go and, you know, do show my photography on Instagram or I'll say some sort of articles I'll, I'll write on Medium about specific subjects. And so I think, and even of course, like your own professional work, whatever you have done, uh, like that also is there in depth, show, shown and written about it. So that sort of like, you know, in a way connects to uh, different aspects. Like you can talk about uh, the business impact also, and also about the product which comes with the design. Mm -hmm. Like so, which, uh, which of course, like I think over a period of time that has become more in me than about managing. So I like to create, I'm more of a creator than of a manager. So if I can put it that way. So, so, so the same question to you, would you say that the portfolio actually can communicate a lot that you've done or do you still think that interface with you is still important for anybody to understand what your portfolio says? Yeah, um, I've not been able to really get a clarity on, on this, like, but it's very evolving, like it is constantly changing. And the moment I've done uh, like something, now I know, okay, what 10 more things I have to do. And I, I am somewhere, there is a sense of uncomfort. Oh yeah, like so much is left to do. <laughs> so always like. So lifelong learner and what a way to put it. I mean, fantastic. I think that's what we all are ultimately going to be. So good to know we all are in the same place. Uh, Akshay, I think I've been hearing your story about, you know, feeling a little fidgety a lot of, lot of times. and. Thank God. I think I thank God because that's what people should be doing. They should start feeling uncomfortable in one place if they are there for a long time. So, so uh, I see that you are the one who's going to who's feeling fidgety, wanting to look at other things. And so, with your portfolio, um, would you advise the students who are preparing a portfolio for application to to also bring in that aspect that they like to they, they, that they like to explore new things. They are always wanting to um, uh, step out of boundaries. So how would you think a person beginning their co career or their uh, step into the career, uh, creative career should prepare their portfolio? Would, um, would skill representation be important in such a case? Right. Uh, I'm going to also share my screen at the same time because I want that the visual should be part of it, uh, what happens. And uh, I'm going to answer the same question also the same time so i have something uh, let me know if we can see it all right so uh, i i get it that uh, what are you mentioning here and why it's important a uniqueness to a portfolio is really important and i think it comes with time it comes with learning uh, once you once you're there and once you start doing different things you know what to put and what not to put but uh, at the same time uh, if you have all the skills mentioned in a in a design world let's say sketching 3d modeling aspect is that rendering and visualization happening in your portfolio i think that's a hit portfolio already because you know everything but that's not the thing because everyone has their own strength and their capabilities in terms of what they can do and it's really important to, for a person to understand what their strengths are and how they want to put it forward uh, if, if you're right there and if if you put your strengths forward and keep working on them you're going to have the right space to put the portfolio in and um, uh, that's what uh, I, I believe in, in terms of how I go about it. So uh, let's say one important part for any design student, a person who's gonna be applying for masters or even for it, going forward to do for an internship, it's, it's always important to document your design process or document what you do every day. So if you're even doing anything, just keep documenting it because it shows your progress also what you've been doing and also shows you what you want to be putting in your portfolio. And then at the end of the day, it's just not about a completed product. 
or a completed cycle. It's also about the starting of it, that where it started and how it took the shape. So um, done is better than perfect. It's been said a lot to designers and I think it's the most important part here. So that's what I wanted to show. Like if we, it's a very preliminary sort of sketches from uh, my Whirlpool, um, you know, uh, the time when I was, uh, I was doing a concept for just making a washer. But that many sketches need to be there to kind of understand what kind of a form and design direction you want to take forward for a person to explain. And um, something like this, where uh, I was doing a project just to, j just for myself with Domus on a Kickstarter campaign, where we're trying to analyze different questionnaires, interviews, understand brand position and plan and strategy, and look at different aspects and sketch. Now, there, there is another slide to it where the product actually becomes a product, takes a shape more, but the more important part is how you start now. When you ask the question, how important it was for a person to put different skills together, it is very important for them to look at different aspects. Even if they are good at photography, it's gonna play a very important role in their portfolio. If they're good at content writing, it's gonna play an even more important role in their portfolio because the kind of uh, you know paras they're gonna use and things they're gonna put is gonna be super interesting. But I think everything to do with uh, what do you do in everyday life? And if you start putting it together, it makes a good portfolio at the end of the day. Right. So, so okay, uh, Akshay, done. All right, so that's, uh, so I would now then uh, shift to Bhaskar's opinion about, I see that you have really worked with some of the, as we say, the top in IT companies, communication companies and you have been in position to look at a, at the portfolio from the other side of the table uh, many people come to you for jobs and for recruitment and you go through portfolio what is it that you, you what are you looking for in the portfolio so could you help me understand yeah sure, sure. What, so, what process so i i think primarily it would be two aspects one is like the uh, the individual personality and, and you know what's unique to that individual that uh, we are trying to understand and, and assess like and also like in terms of whether uh, the individual would fit with the team or the role like uh, he's applying for and then the second is of course in terms of the, the professional work that individual would get into and whether the person has right aptitude and sensibilities for that so that is also another aspect that we would uh, you know try to I, like look into a into a person and then yeah so again both of them to expand them further uh, like in terms of your personality we'll start looking at maybe uh, how does your you know how if person has explored on photography for example or if uh, how how person is photographing himself and you're trying to present on social media uh, like for example like and and of and when it comes to work I would recommend that an individual should uh, go into depth of one or two projects rather than have a lot of work. So it's it's like you, for the role that you really seek, maybe something related to that, you should really go in depth with one or two projects of yours. And like, for example, in, in I would, rec I have mostly recruited for user experience design. Mm -hmm. So we would look, go into really in depth about understanding, okay, why you took a certain decision in a certain way and and yeah, of course, other aspects which even Akshay also was showcasing that how that individual is working, like, you know, how the person has arrived at that particular work. Somewhere, if you could illustrate that. Right. Uh, so another question to you, Bhaskar. So many times uh, we have been pointed out uh, as a school or as design educators that a lot of portfolios start looking very similar because they use the same software uh, a styling is adapted because it seems to be doing well with the with the people who view it, or a, a technique is adopted where students find it easier to represent whatever work they've done. Now, a lot of portfolios looking similar. Does uh, does it matter to you as a rec as a head of design who's going to recruit somebody? What do, what would you look out for? I mean, is it something specific, or is it the person whom you prefer to talk to to find out things? What would you say? Yeah, so uh, of course the sense of originality is is highly important. Like you know, when uh, and uniqueness to each and every individual, and that can only come by following your own passion and heart somehow. You know, understanding what what is deep down you're good at, 
and really trusting your own self rather than looking at competition or like you know thinking of it in that competitive way <laughs> like so but but definitely like you know uh, you your professional work there i'll also say there is a sense of common sort of a matrix around various factors how good it is in problem solving how aesthetically pleasing your designs are so they do get uh, you know uh, evaluated on those aspects also but uh, uh, but yeah deep down i think if you if a sense of originality is with an individual it's really uh, like some a quality to look for it can be valued yes and on the other hand aksha since you have very recently in the past been applying to colleges and of course in applying for jobs that you coated uh, how would you say that how did you try to be different Did you have the fear every you know a lot of work looks similar so what should you do right i think um, as i mentioned before and um, as paskar also you know same same way that it's really important at the starting that what matters in the process and the final results everything contributes which influence design and understanding so even a person who is going about doing anything in his life in terms of uh, you know uh, of photography things and different things how are you going to be adding into the portfolio uh, that's a huge benefit to you and um, i think um, it's also about customizing your portfolio to what exactly you want to do and uh, where do you want to send it so i'm not going to send the same portfolio to a college and send same portfolio for a job uh, because i might want to tweak it a little bit i'm not going to even send it send the same portfolio to two jobs i want, might want to retweak my page arrangement a little bit what, because i i really want to show them my strength that at the first 30 second they grab my they grab the attention and they actually want to look forward to me because what do you share in a portfolio is a <clears throat> sorry it's a very quick 20 page slide and you always end up giving them link to even view more now why are they going to view more they only going to view more if you able to grab their attention so my point has always been there when i send the portfolio accordingly so i i know that if i'm sending it to a home appliance brand my first few pages are something to do with their kind of a work or more to do with uh, concepts and uh, when i have to send it to something to do with like uh, let's say a brand which is uh, to do with a different sort of work has a diverse portfolio which is a design studio i'm going to mix up my work uh, because i want them to see that i can do from an x to z all the concept i can also do this i can do model making i can do different uh, understanding of materials i can even uh do a 3d modeling and take it to a manufacturing level so i want them to understand all that so i think um to to uh, to get an idea about that mm-hmm. so uh i'm just going to again try i'll i'll try and add something to what akshay is also saying yeah. maybe mm-hmm. so um just that i'll also say uh, to students that uh, uh if they are some if they really want to change and impact something in society they should really take it up as a project and put it as their work in in portfolio because emotionally they would be aligned to that like so they would really want to go and impact and and do something it could be as simple as you know maybe you like to create forms and you want to you know just make uh, uh, like beautiful 3d sculptures and you should you should go ahead and do that actually because then when you are going and presenting your work you the the tone with which you will talk and uh, that will you know say a lot so i i do remember like you know we i was interviewing a graphic designer who was uh, who only was kicked about designing logos and he had not worked earlier with any organization as such so but then he took all the popular brands like for example he took bbc earth logo and the e of the earth he tilted slightly with the axis so just uh, just by looking at that particular a series of exploration that he did we were so excited that we were we ended up recruiting him for graphic design role for ux actually and he did really good like like had a good time working together okay that's a great uh, insight uh, sorry akshay you wanted to show something right so i just want to continue where uh, bhaskar left the page it's just same thing that you know tell a story with design and it's about the mo- both the things that's about the portfolio and it's about the personality portfolio going to end up uh, you know getting you to the interview and personality going to give you the chance to be in the job or the internship so if you have both that's how it's going to work it's just not one way so it's both the things and i think telling a story with design is always been a key and if you do that uh, that's that's how you're going to achieve it because 
So I'm going to share a project which I did for Domus to get the scholarship in terms of uh, Alessi was the one who wanted to us to do it. And uh, Alessi had a brief which said that you go back to your cultural root and understand where you come from. And then you start, then you, then you uh, do a, do a, a, a mocha pot, which is a very familiar coffee brewing process every day in Italy. And you, you align with your cultural thing and look for an aluminum material and look at a way how you want to, um, go forward and how Alessi would think to go forward with the Monka pot. Uh, this is how I go, went about the process and the whole idea here was that uh, belonging to Jaipur, I was, I've been to museum a lot of time, the city museum, and I see uh, this big silver urn vessel which has been lying there. It's so huge. I try to take the inspiration from that form and develop a kettle which just looks like a kettle and give it a more uh, conventional uh, way of looking at a kettle, but then a more technology front, it has a it has a brewing capacity and uh, which is an automatic uh, way of getting the coffee every day in the morning. So it brews your perfect coffee every day before you get up and then understand your time cycle or getting a UX to it and experience to it and adding that form and value to it, which, which makes sense. So you, you start putting a story together and then it starts at correlating really well with the design. So th that's what my point would be here, that it makes sense to have something in your portfolio when it starts combining up with everything and it starts adding to it. Okay, where can we order this yeah. product? Of yours? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's just really typing. This is going to give ideas to a lot of design students. Oh, you can actually look in your backyard and get ideas. So this is right. wonderful. Uh, uh, now, we, now we leave aside our subject matter and we say, okay, enough of design. That is by default. You should be good in all the subject areas. How about if you have other professional skills, whether naturally or whether you have been cultivating it for a long time? For example, you have great communication skills, great people skills, you know, interacting with people, having great uh, emotional skills, being empathetic to people, or even simple things like I can, uh, you know, I, I have great uh, social media skills. I mean, these are all skills which have developed around the way we have been brought up with the technology around us and with the people around us. Do you think that's important to be integrated in the portfolio that you are showing it either whether it's for an admission to a college or whether it is for a job application? Uh, so Bhaskar, may I? Request? Yeah, sure. So uh, definitely like I, I would rather go in support of, you know, that, that you should say, even if you are not, uh, you have a particular skill set, say into music or into maybe adventure sports, <laughs> you, you are, uh, yeah. something like, so you should, maybe if you can show that also in, in depth and how creatively you have, you have, you know, explored around that, uh, it will definitely add value only to you rather than, uh, even if you're not aligned to the specific role that company is offering. But, but I, I have seen many a times, like, you know, they want, uh, places want to bring diversity to the teams. So it's, yeah. and you might, you're, they're not expecting you to really know their businesses. Uh, that well because you're going to come and learn and grow so but then they do want to see okay how whatever you have done how well you have done that and how passionate you are about it absolutely how how interesting to know that recruiters are also looking at diversity they they are wanting to be more inclusive that's so wonderful news um what do you think akshay no, i think it's the same it's very important uh you know, you never know that uh, idea can strike anywhere. So even if you are having a second, uh, you know, hobby or let's say a thing you love doing, you end up doing a product out of it. I know some of people who, who really love music. He's been working on guitars and things. He's been working on paddles for it and knobs for it, and he made a brand out of it. So sometimes that that hobby just takes the shape of design. Uh, a person who loves food might actually end up becoming a food designer with the design degree in hand and the way how it is it, people are doing crazy things you end up making a 3d printer which prints food make pastries for you in most unimaginable shapes so the thing here is that there is no limit to things and uh, how you should look at it is that even if you have those other things happening in your portfolio it gives an idea to a recruiter about your personality that you think and you have a process in your head you have this zeal to learn and you have this you know oh, oh, there's something happening in your mind it's just not to do with work you're not doing the work to be getting paid for 
you're actually enjoying the whole thing and that's given him more of a strength to hire you rather than rejecting your profile so it's yeah, always an addition yeah. yeah it's always an addition to have that photography model making sketching different abilities to do things video making some people are so good at video editing that corporates want them to do that because they can quickly give you an idea and what better way to present an idea than having a video in hand quickly done so uh, it's just, it's just that you can you can start with that the one thing you can learn from today and it's always going to help i think right just a just a point to add or shall say that uh, in fact you are also interviewing your recruiter like you all the time find an alignment like in a way right. like when you are trying to apply for a job so you see right. okay whether the recruiters were trying to encourage these behavior of yours because that's going to be a work and that's going to be a life actually so you see that people who have done that encouraged you for that thing go and work with them rather than you know suffer some place yeah that, that, that's going to be a point where you should not be afraid in interview like it yeah. just shouldn't seem like that this is the only job you want it just should look like from your face that no i i, I would look for more even if i'm going to find another opportunity i'm going to go that's what time says that was fortune says that the most of the unexpected job opportunities come when you're not looking for them so you need to keep yourself open you never know what's going to land uh, what's going to end up or what's going to land in your portfolio very soon and which company going to come forward and ask you would you like to work for us so if you keep working on your football portfolio it's going to happen yeah it's it's your life and for that organization <laughs> it is just right. adding maybe one more resource yeah one more it's resource more to important it. for you so i am yeah. so happy to hear that because i yeah. think ultimately everyone should be looking out for a job in a place where they feel comfortable right they've got it's not just opportunities of growth promotionally vertically it's also about what else can they develop uh, you know how can they develop themselves in that place and what else can they be learning there so i right. think youngsters who are listening to this are really going to be uh, you know looking at an overall 360 degrees perspective when when, when they are preparing for portfolio for jobs for admissions and for many other things in future i think uh, i'm going to add to that what you said professor like um... we all know virat kohli we know how great a sportsman person he is now he said just one thing i'm going to day the i'm going to leave cricket leave the cricket is the day i'm going to feel i'm not doing it well he does it because he loved doing it so if you love your job if you get up in the morning and go to office and feel that you're not in office you're doing fine the day you start feeling that leave it and move forward so it's as simple as that the day you feel it's not happening this is not the place and there is something wrong you exactly get the feel out of it otherwise if you feel that you're not even there you enjoy go- getting up and getting to the office if you're even struggling to get up that means you need to leave it. you need to do something else i have one few bridges like i <laughs> i would recommend not to burn bridges but like <laughs> <laughs> right i know you 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 hear of burnout cases and i think it happens because of sticking on in a place which really is not giving you any more happiness Right. So we come now to the last question of our session, and that is, I'm going to ask both of you to answer that. So to begin with, let's say, Bhaskar, what would you now advise youngsters who, of course, want to who are aspiring to get into college of their dream? So they are preparing a portfolio for that. Similarly, students who are graduating now looking for certain kind of job, or play, they all have probably. they have been having it in their heads what would you like to advise them yeah so interesting so i think uh, you know you might hear this very commonly also like you know people saying but staying yourself like you know being yourself is very important and then you know think of yourself like a brand because whenever it comes to design designers you always hear names like you always hear famous names of the sachi you always hear so i think from the very start if you think of your own self in in that way you are your own brand and it has to be like you know very original maybe something very unique which you can contribute to so i think nothing like it like nothing would actually all the hurdles in your way would move automatically you'll start aligning maybe law of attraction would work in your favor or something so thank you and akshar i i i of course want your perspective because you are so close to them in age and you probably understand them a lot more What i think it's you- it's yeah i'm uh, sorry to cut you off uh, yeah um i think um, it's very important that you make a good selection of your best work 
and keep working around them because there are no bad ideas and uh, you can keep improving them this the something about that when initially you get something i just just note it down on a sketchbook you because you tend to forget things but if you if you write it or if you draw about it then it keeps evolving as a thought uh, so i'm going to say just as as uh, as all designers say just get a sketchbook <laughs> sketch every day and if you if you keep doing that then you you're going to see a ton of improvement in yourself and don't put too many projects just don't choose the work you're unhappy with anymore and uh, i think there are activities uh, which you can do in terms of uh, understanding the kind of work you want to put and how you're going to do go about it just a lot of observation observe 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 a lot uh, network a lot it's you always feel that you can't really ask another person because he's such a big designer no actually it's not true even if he has like a 13000 followers on instagram it doesn't matter you drop him a message you never know if you're going to get an answer back deconstruct if you have something which has been lying around and it's not useful deconstruct it open it up see what happens inside play around and uh, reflect and i would say explore really explore a lot go out there's no more learning than going out stepping out of your house digital world has made us uh, dummies you can't love every uh, you can't learn any everything just by sitting on laptop um, researching on laptop uh, exploring products on laptop you really need to touch and feel things and then work out i think um, with things getting only to limited to our uh, you know zone which is digital and not really getting out more you really need to work out if you work out it, it improves the circulation and blood and it gives you more thoughts and ideas when you are actually doing that uh, on this uh, uh, page i want to share and screen where uh, i think there are a lot of people who are doing amazing work out there and uh, uh, there are one thing you can learn from today or let's say there are many things you can learn from them every day these guys uh, on the right hand side are major designers or professionals i follow who follow them or you try to see them and look at their work uh, every one of them is different they have developed their skills in their way and uh, they're mostly to do with industrial design because that's what i follow but you're going to get a lot of ideas about other things also because uh, that's how they go about it on the left hand side there are uh, design firms and uh, design inspiration websites i would suggest or pages i suggest they do a really nice work so young go to be design boom layer we all know design well trend weekly on instagram design bunker boost folio is a page to just to cater to the folios and boost folios arrangement in terms of how how well you can do a portfolio and then different challenges pages and frog design and other design agencies which we already know so uh, i think that would be my thought i would leave this page if someone wants to note down things yeah okay so we we'll leave it on and uh, firstly great views macro views micro views and a lot of perspectives so uh, there are there have been questions now by uh, participants and they know want to know a few more things i'm going to read it out to you and would request you to answer them so uh, dipash was asking how do you build a strong portfolio of course he's, he's heard a whole lot of this but i guess if uh, uh, he could be asking a lot more about because uh, is it about some other field would you like to say what's a strong portfolio i mean we did talk about it but i'd like to you to sort of summarize it once again uh, bhaskar would you uh, want okay. to okay 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 so some sense of rigor into the domain that you are working on could be like maybe i call a strong portfolio for that domain for like maybe i can if i could interpret in that sense like but then i am always looking for the individual uh, like but then yeah like for example like lot of uh, like you know links and examples which akshay has given say so they could be if you want to do apply as a graphic designer into or you want to illustrate for for books and you are applying to some publishing house to do cover pages for them so uh, your strong portfolio would definitely be some, be something which would have uh, worked a lot on those uh, you know those aspects so your illustrations maybe you have done a lot of 100 day projects around that you can start doing that so your your portfolio starts becoming stronger so if that maybe answers the question Akshay, what do you like to say? Uh, your definition of what is a strong portfolio? I just uh, remember myself doing a portfolio when I was in ILM, and today when I see it, my portfolio there is like so much difference. So this thing about it that portfolio it keeps on growing. It's a never-ending journey, like you. 
So you can't expect your portfolio to become strong in day one. It's going to keep on becoming strong slowly. You need to get to the skill. You need to get to understand what your style is. You're going to, it's an endless process. And uh, it's going to be also depending on the time, how strong portfolio you need. You're not going to be applying for the same profile all the time. So uh, I would say the strong portfolio would start with observation. If at the very basic level, if you have the process right, if you have things shown, if you document your uh, uh, process and the work you do, you click pictures, you you put them together and just simple thing, typographic, typographical alignment, um, screen size ratio, never send an A4 uh, uh, portfolio to people. <laughs> it's so hard with two blank uh, strips going left and right. Uh, send a few white screens, you know, it's in to be in ratio. So if you do those small, small things to start with a portfolio, well, the content would keep on improving. So it's more important that you start well. It's some of hierarchy of information. What do you want to present them? How do you want to take them through the journey? And uh, I think that's what's going to make a very good portfolio. And keep following the people who do good stuff. Understand their work, uh, why they do it and how they do it in a certain way. Why their process is like that. And then you try put your process into alignment also because the style not going to come in one day. It's going to come slowly to you. And uh, that only going to come when you're going to do it every day. Otherwise, it's not going to come. So it's a, it's a process. You have to keep doing it. Thank you. The second question is by Saga Sisters. And they are asking specifically about how good content writing is helpful in making a portfolio. So if you're strong at, uh, uh, you know, you, you want to write about the process or the work you've done in the portfolio, is that important and how is it going to help? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Like, of course, like if that uh, ability to express it, it comes out in words, uh, your work also creatively. So, so that is uh, definitely a value add, but with design, you also understand that communication is also very visual also. So if, if you're say thinking in the domain of content strategy and you want to be strong at that, so you, of course the, the material that you have written, that is your portfolio. So. All right. Akshay, would you want to say anything? Yeah, I think um, I would say that uh, design thinking and what do you say the design is actually, it's very visual. So the words, when they start becoming visual, it, it helps a lot. So if your words are very correct in terms of like someone like me, I really struggle to find that one liner and things I want to mention sometimes if I'm wrong, if a proper statement is needed, I think a content writing would help help a lot in that way because uh, that would improve a sense of uh, a sense of communication and design is about communication. So you might have the visuals right, but you might not have the words right. So you do need the right words also with the right images sometimes. Uh, and I would believe that if you're really good at writing, that, that always going to be a benefit to you because you're going to be writing uh, uh, synthesis, you're going to be writing um, a whole uh, narrative, or you're going to be writing a, a one pager to explain what a project uh, is all about. And you might be more crisp and more clear than other person, which always going to be a benefit to you. You never, never submit a design entry to a design competition without writing a narrative or without writing something. So a content writing would be such a plus for you to get anything you want. Any other design college. Let's say drafting an email, you're going to be better than a lot of people if you're good at content writing. Right. And that one email of yours is going to actually make you have an interview before someone else. Correct. I think that, that's a point. Uh, Akshay, may I request you to please remove the slide because now we're right. moving on to some more other things. But in the right. meantime, there's a question for... Uh, uh, both of you or either of you does switching companies leave a bad impression uh, on the recruiters uh, so one of course Bhaskar as, as somebody who is interviewing uh, potential candidates and Akshay since you I'm sure have experience also what do you think okay so um, yes and no both I'll say so like maybe uh, uh, I think it also uh, say this thing that, okay, how clear you are beforehand, but then there is a sense of understanding that uh, like, when, say you have joined a specific place and you left it very early 
uh, and but then uh, and i am not able to see like you know any other if i am recruiting for a senior role and i am not able to see that you have really done that maybe more often then i am naturally worried because i am trying to recruit someone to stay come stay for longer and i can trust and depend on and with with all the best of my intention so uh, so so yeah so even i have done that like mm-hmm. it's not like i have not left companies i have left companies in four months five months also and uh, definitely i do get uh, this uh, like when i'm trying to get into new project i do get this perspective from recruiters that they don't like it that part a lot mm-hmm. but then there are other maybe other places where i have really worked and enjoyed and for for years and mm-hmm. that has come out so i would say like uh, if you're not liking and you're stuck up don't stay but try and you know uh, see that Okay, this is the place where I'll align to, and try and stick to it for a while at least. So. Correct. So thank you, and Akshay. Now your perspective. Sorry. With yeah. your experience. <laughs> I would say it goes both ways. It depends on how a person is taking it. To me, it's never been a question. Why did you leave soon? Though I have made it a point that I'm going to give an time to an organization in terms of how they contact, how they they're going to influence me. So it takes time sometimes. and uh, people judge very quickly so you can't judge a place in 6 months you might want to be there for a one or a one and a half year or two and then take your decision um leaving a place or switching job is not a problem the thing is what are you going for next is it aligned with your career graph is it making sense to you like someone who has just left the jobs after 3 years then two then one one and a half two might end up becoming something we which he really wanted to become through that channel because that's a ladder for him but at the some some point when a person is hiring for a senior role they might feel that we don't want him because we want someone very stable to run our team for next 5 years so it's also on the profile what they are hiring for and sometimes it's also on organization do they want to save you sometimes they just want you to leave it's, it's, it's right if you want to leave it's not the way around as well yeah it's the other way around as well if you get it if you get it very clear that what they are off to is not aligning with you and they are really not aligned with you and if you're going to if you going to lead they're not going to stop you so it's better just uh you know with the respect take the door go for the next one and you spend two years just make them look nice and the thing is always uh, keep your network alive i think and because if, your if network if they don't if they don't like some place they can maybe you know make them <laughs> <laughs> yeah they may not leave <laughs> because network is your net worth i say so yeah. uh, design industry is really small so even if you even if you don't know anyone he going to know someone who knows you or someone he knows and he knows someone going to know you so it going to come to you very quickly it's a very very small industry uh, you would not find your way out if you're going to do you know work which not going to match to what you showed in your portfolio if it's not going to work it's going to come back to you sooner or later you you would not be able to hide it's it's not a profession where it's very easy to just camouflage yourself and work It's, it's not possible so globally actually it's a global industry and the network yeah. works globally so i think yeah network is is so that, important i think that <laughs> is a good tip for the youngsters who want to get in so they so you know you can really make your place in here because it's a small industry and so i hope disha you found your answers i'm going to give you a question by shirish uh should the quantity of work matter in the portfolio i whether it's in the beginning or even if it is for a job uh, application so okay maybe akshay if you want to answer this i would say in the starting quantity of work matters to you not to the portfolio if you don't have the quantity you would not have the quality so you start with the quantity a lot of quantity you know this people would say tum kyu paper kharab kar rahe ho why do you just destroying this it's such a important resource but that's how you're going to go about it so the more quantity you're going to work on it's going to give you quality of work after 6 months and you're going to see the difference in it so it's going to come to you very very naturally and it's a progression you can't expect yourself to make one sketch and it's going to look amazing no that's not going to happen you're going to be actually doing 100 sketches and then it's going to have there going to be one sketch Which, which might look good so i would say yes it's important but, but you would not share quantity in your portfolio you would share quality in your portfolio but the quantity would stay with you home because that's a process you went through to get there and if you're going to show that in your portfolio that also works a lot of pages a lot of screens a lot of things and then a final result 
that you know I, I did explore a lot to get there otherwise it just a person shouldn't feel in your portfolio that it came out of nowhere you know you just suddenly popped up okay here you go the aesthetically pleasing looking design in one shot that's probably not what they are looking at i think sometimes so i think akshay you are reiterating what the what is the importance of the design process and right yeah so a sketchbook every day that's what all i'm going to say <laughs> and it's going to help you <laughs> I'm going to pose the next question to you, Bhaskar. Though this has sure. been repeated, but I don't know if you'd like to. Uh, a young man called Johan is asking, "What is the key of making your portfolio stand out and to catch the eye of the recruiters?" I mean, I really think this question seems to be troubling a lot of youngsters. Okay. Uh, maybe is it because it's the the world out there is so much more competitive? Yeah. What do you so, think, Oscar? Can you help? Yeah, me? I'll try to explain you in 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 a in a way like okay, let's see. Like so, say now your purpose that I am trying to get is uh, you're trying to maybe you know get into a job, right? And then you're trying to impress the recruiters. So of course, like you know there are points which Akshay has has told like also like you have a lot of variety also, but then you go in depth also like you know into one area. for right. the specific role that you are getting into now i take i flip this context to something very different so for example you are a small entrepreneur and then you are trying to put your work out there you're trying to market say somebody is selling sarees online as simple as as that like you know uh, what is the sense of portfolio to them like you know they would what is sense of brand to them so they also want more people to buy so how would they go about learning maybe they are learning digital marketing on skillshare or linda and then they're trying to make instagram profile they're trying to either self wear if uh, like if a lady is trying to you know market or i i know a friend who has been doing like that and then that ultimately starts becoming their portfolio their own brand uh, around that so and you are pretty and and then you are there to grow your business it's feeding your family so you do want to excel into that so there is a very much need Uh, so so you will try and learn different ways you can improvise that uh, so maybe you can look at it in that sense so so i hope you hand that would sort of uh, give you some clarity of what you're looking for uh, there's a question on online portfolio so uh, how do you prepare an online portfolio and would also a physical portfolio be important in future you think i think uh, for online you can use behance um, it's it's very nice as a network then you can have a website around it too though a pdf with a mail a small pdf to give an idea about you would be really nice uh, to add to what because this can answer both yohan and the question right now is it's really difficult in these times because the world has become so competitive and it's exactly right that's why you need to look up more you need to see what people are doing around the world because the competition is really high uh, design is continuously growing and for you to be equal to them or align with them you really need to see what what's happening around so uh, if you want yourself to be in a position where you are actually applying for a design agency which is really 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 good you can expect them to have 100 portfolios and why should they open their your mail it all happens because of content writing probably those first few pdfs you have the visuals you have the hierarchy of information you have what you're trying to show that one one depth project four small projects diversity in those four projects so everything starts playing around very quickly and um, yes having strong visuals would be a really important point when when you're actually looking for a job or you're already on a job and want to move on a second job you would expect a lot of competition because people around would be doing a lot of work and it all becomes are you being able to update your portfolio have you been able to take care of yourself in terms of improving yourself it's not about that you just graduated from a design school you became a designer after that day you actually need to improve every day because software's versions are improving portfolio contents are improving how people design is improving trends are changing so never things never going to be same so the only way your portfolio to stand out is if you constantly keep looking and keep updating it and uh, i think for the online portfolio behance prolo fort is a good medium to start with Instagram itself has become a good page. If you want to share a link for a person to quickly open an Instagram, write your name. He sees your work, see few pictures, and get an idea about it. You write them information also. A small PDF and a good content, contented email would always help you out. All right. And a personal website is always a plus. 
if you have it just but, just as a one more tip i'll recommend like i'm not seen much of this but i'll recommend maybe someone can do rich media video or something like right. that about yeah. it so that would mm-hmm. make you stand out really nobody has time yeah. to really go through you can just say a lot in a minute and right. if you can a great video of yourself about that so it's amazing uh, everyone has their own way yes what you what bhaskar is saying exactly right it also depends on where you're sending stuff sometimes yeah. uh, if you're going to sending a sending a mail to an organization they do not expect anything more than 10 mb now do it <laughs> so, no pdfs uh, uh, <laughs> well thank you very much i'm just going to wind up the session but i can't tell you how important first of all dipanshu your question was really uh, important and relevant and it has brought about quite a bit of technical tips for you guys i hope it will be useful but i'm going to wind up the session and it has been most informative uh, i first want to thank our speakers our guests so bhaskar and akshay from two corners of the country you have taken out time to talk to our uh, participants participants thank you for being there i hope you really have enjoyed the session and learned something because ultimately we do want to be uh, useful with the time that you are spending with us so just to summarize very quickly building your portfolio is a lot about uh, you putting in your strengths your clarity of what you are what what subject expertise you have garnered over the years put it in well but always there have been so many tips i'm just going to mention a few like tell a story tell a story about what you're doing be original you want to be original with a lot of things uh, network uh, make sure that you really feel the pulse of uh, the recruiter to whom you are approaching so there are so many other things about making sure continuous development that has to go on it never stops thank god for that because i do know people who come into design really want that excitement all their lives i hope we are all going to be following with that and i want to thank the team which has really made this possible there are quite a few questions which we haven't been able to take on but we will take them on uh, please write to us uh, if you have any more and i will take the i will fo- trouble you once again if needed bhaskar and akshay if they look if they're looking for answers we will come back to you but thank you once again and um, i hope our participants will return and ask us questions or or seek any other expert areas uh, exposure to expert areas that you are looking forward to so, so happy happy to be here and i think they can even comment on the youtube yeah. i think if it is available to them we can answer there itself absolutely yeah. right that would be wonderful so thank you yeah thank you. Uh, be safe and um, we hope to meet soon yeah. sure you too stay safe thank you so much yeah. thank you have a great day bye great day bye, bye.